this is how you do a large illusion, the same idea. I got the ideas by watching Franz Ferrari, he's cool. And so is Lance Burton and David Copperfield, the Pendragons. Jonathan Pendragon, Master of Magnificent. Charlotte Pendragon, Melinda the First Lady of Magic. Where do you get the idea? Uh, Jeff McBride and all that, Paul Daniels and all that. Paul Gertner, Jay Sankey of Sankey Magic, all of them. Magic Orthodoxy, every one of them. And all the mass magicians out there, including Herbert Becker, Lawrence, Herbert L. Herbert Lawrence Becker of all the secrets magic revealed. Anyway, um, and Val Valentino Leonard Montana, the mass magician, and CBS mystery magician, 1980s. Anyway, um, and Franz Ferrari and Robert Goldberg, Stream Magic, and Harry Blackstone Sr. and Jr. And Eric West, Harry Houdini, and Theo Hardine, all them, Best Ron, and all them. Okay, and Robert Houdin. And you take an eye at the end and become, he became Houdini like Houdin. Anyway, Rennie has mentioned that. Okay, which, this is the idea of perspective view. Isolation of interest, perspective view, time misdirection. Imagine this on a bigger scale. Outside on a parking lot or airport runway, you, or you name it. Oh, you put a cloth goes up. You see the perspective. Everything seems fine. Goes like this. Assistance behind the scenes. Well, it would have been quicker than this, but I'm trying to play two roles here. It's not going to work right. Well, it would. It don't take this long to do this, folks. It's just. It's not easy to do. I can't get this to stay in place for some reason. There. It would have been quicker than this. It would have been like. Put the cover up, and then go. Whoosh, like that. That's how it should look. And now, you see a difference now. Let's see if you notice the difference compared be, be, before and after. The perspective view, isolation of interest perspective view. I could do the same thing. Put this here. If I wanted to put something in front of it, all I'd have to do is move this out of the way, bring that up front. And drop the sheet, ta-da! And to make it more amazing, bring it more up front. And make this about as the same as the position as before. And they're like, where'd that come from? That was not there. Everything was in its perspective, but that was there. It's all in you, your perspective view. Photoristic cardboard cutout of the scenery to bring the Learjet or tank or helicopter into view and put the scenery back in place or Drop it down and it matches the runway or floor or parking lot and you're seeing a real scenery all right, and You could have mirrors 
do the same thing, or a glass that bends light around an object, called quantum stealth bending light invisibility nanobots, with 3D cloaking added with it. You got perfect cloaking Klingon idea. Um, bending light invisibility nanobots metamaterials, with added with 3D cloaking visual stealth. All right. Anyway, you or the object itself, the layer jet is a photoristic cardboard cutout or a hologram that you can reach out and touch it. Photo hologram and stuff like that. And the further away the object is that you're trying to hide, you can make it ray in the back and they can't see it. By the way it, back it is, just to watch the angles. And then secretly bring it into play. And this moves out of the way. This moves up closer and put this at the same spot or best as possible. They drop the sheet, drop the shields. They're like, Where did this come from? Right here. That container came out of nowhere, or the jet came out of nowhere, or the helicopter. It came out of nowhere. Some will say an elevator, or a fast elevator, or a flipped upside down. Those are my ideas. But magicians say, Bill, the magician would do it the cheapest way as possible. They bring it in, or they haul it out the back. The scenery is a fake backdrop, like they do in movies, screens, and stuff. Or, the object itself is, is a cardboard cutout. Or a, or a photorealistic cardboard cutout. And Franz Harry's got a new way to do it. Sun meets the horizon. So I, I figured, okay, he raises the platform up higher. Sun meets the horizon. And if you watch the Santa Fe Hotel, Hotel, Santa Fe Hotel building disappear and bring back down with Casey Kasem, the voice of Robin and and uses, I think he uses his own voice for, uh, Battle of the Planets, 7 Dark 7, um, uh, thing. He plays the main pilot character, anyway. But he also plays Shaggy, the voice of Shaggy, and he's also a radio, uh, announcer and stuff. But he recently passed away, if I'm mistaken. Casey Kasem, so it's good they got him on camera a lot. Anyway, Casey Kasem, um, and his wife too. His wife was on Cheers one time. Anyway, um, and she was on the Drewless Telethon. So it was Casey Kasem. Anyway, um, anyway, God provided the clouds at the right moment, because when he brought the sheet down, and he said, let's shoot your flare. Yeah, thing of beauty. Pew, pew. Yeah, thing of beauty. And all of a sudden, you see the clouds are even with the road. And then when he brings, raises the sheet up again, bring it back down. Now the clouds are up in the air again. And that RV truck that's on the side, it goes from bright color to dark color. Because of the sun's reflection coming and going of raising the platform up higher or lower and the the, the camera doesn't feel, feel the shift because it's going up and down and Copperfield did the Statue of Liberty by having a lazy Susan turntable move real slow so you imagine that this is the Statue of Liberty the sheet goes up and the onyx is moving slowly with the orchestra music and silent ball bearings and the helicopter pilot is moving at the same moment and the source lights come over here to the duplicate ring of lights with smoke and everything and they drop the sheet 
now they're looking at an empty ring of lights searchlight smoke and all in the night the tower of lights night blind the onions for a few minutes so you can't now see a darkened statue that has a purple black lights in the crown area they cut the original lights around the Statue of Liberty and someone uploaded uh, I think it's the night that that happened when he made the statue disappear they said that it was like a power failure at the Statue of Liberty and you see the lights go out on the statue <laughs> anyway Cooper was having control of the situation anyway um and the girls' models were there with the Polaroid cameras were there to, to make the shutter to have enough light at 100 yards with 50 cent, 50 cent light bulbs won't show a now darkened statue when they show the pictures before and after. I talked to Troy Summer, church member, and he's a good photographer even for our church photography thing one time, church photo thing, directory thing, and and um, I think it was when Pastor where Mike Palmer was there, I think. Anyway, and he does photos for the Navy and all that stuff. Anyway, I let him read, read that. And he said, yep, that is actually, that's exactly right. At 100 yards, 50 cents, flash bulbs won't show, it a, show up a darkened statue. Yep, he said, that's correct. Troy Summer should know. He knows everything about cameras and video cameras. Anyway, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I assume he knows everything about video cameras. If he knows about po cameras in general, he should know about video cameras. All right. Um, I'm trying to think. Tim Brown, Nathaniel Brown's good with the photo cameras, and now they're gradually learning the video camera. They're getting real good with that video camera. Real good. Um, trying to think. Their brother Matt's getting real good with the radio, radio in Cancun thing and missionaries and I can't think of that place. But anyway, he's got that up and running and now he's using that as a Sony tool, a, a radio station there. Just like our church has a radio station, two or three radio stations, but it's the same station, but anybody can watch those three stations, AM or FM. <coughs> hmm. In the 1980s, we just only had AM 1010, the Christian station. <coughs> that was past the word Mark Palmer days, and probably past the Dallas, Dallas days, to Dallas Angeles days too, the founding pastor. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Perspective view, I know I was talking about all this. I, see, I ramble on, I forget what my main thought is. Bending line, invisible nanobots, mental material. Government's got technology like that. People have seen where they see a triangle craft. And they, look, they can see underneath it because they can see the stars right through it. But it's a solid object flying right by them. That's light bending around an object. And then in daytime and noontime, this guy takes regular cameras and then he puts some in infrared, some in night vision. And he puts them all in the same area. And he shows footage of the regular camera. You can't see nothing in the sky. Then you see the infrared, you can see the government aircraft. And with the night vision, you can see the government aircraft. They're hiding in plain sight because they're bending light. Well, you get to just uh, bring how to make objects appear and disappear. Anyway, front. Oh, yeah, the Statue of Liberty. That's what I was talking about. All right. <clears throat> and I noticed that the radar. The black rim is showing like a sundial effect. The generalistic lights, but then someone said it could be the back lights of of the lights back there that's doing it. But you can see that there is movement on a turntable, a Lady Susan turntable, a large one. 
and the park ranger made a model of, of it because he knew how it was done. They made a turntable and they had a biography one and they had a Santa Claus going around the Statue of Liberty on a turntable and they said, I don't know what that represents, that's confusing. And I'm thinking, I know, the Statue of Liberty with the turntable. And even Copper did a, uh, a commercial, might have been a Target commercial, I don't know. But he and this girl are going in a, like they're going like a turntable idea. And my dad said, see, it's good that, that even Copperfield doesn't mind revealing secrets. And, and in another Target commercial, it shows little clips of him practicing walking through the Great Wall of China. Because he said he went through many different versions so they found one they were proud of. And he happened to show a clip of it in between a Target commercial. Or some kind of commercial, anyway. Anyway. <clears throat> Cuthbert used to advertise at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Virginia. I never got to show his, see his show there. But I got to see his show a lot of times at Chrysler Hall in Norfolk, Virginia. Thanks to Bob Schofield and then the Story family. And my nephew Eugene got to go. And then the same place, Mickey's Magic Show... And I was able to take my nephew, William, and then Bobby wanted to go, but it was called Boys Night Out, so she couldn't go. So, the story made up by asking my niece, Bobby, what she wanted, and we went to the fast food place and got what she wanted. And then, a Fat Albert movie that Andy Story and my niece, Tony, wanted to go see, so, and they went with us, and... We watched that, and, and as the credits are going, um, he, Fat Albert, or one of the guys, said, said, why are you leaving so soon? And Andy goes, how did he know we were leaving? I didn't say a thing, I don't think. I just let the magic happen. And it's just pure rain, and it was pure coincidence. Anyway, God let it happen. He's in control of everything, anyway. Yeah. It's like William was amazed, like, how did Copperfield know my car? We used his name and my name, and he found my card on the Fire of Passions TV special. I said, he knew your card, William. He, William got mind blown, my nephew William. My nephew Eugene got mind blown on these card tricks I did. And then I show him how to do it. I showed William, so he's understanding how magic tricks work. But sometimes I might show a trick that he knew, my nephew William, and he'll be blown away, like I just made an elephant disappear, Houdini style, with with the elephant genie, genie. But it's not. He, if I showed a video of him doing the same trick, but William forgot that he did that trick. It's it's amazing how the after a while, when you become older, you forget things. But thanks to video, you can I can jar their memory. It's like Tony. She's like, I rode my brother William's Spider-Man skateboard? And I didn't have no safety helmet or knee pad? What was I thinking? Well, that's you, Tony. That's no stunt double. <laughs>